Parental discretion is advised. On this week's Wrestling Mayhem show, we discuss the mystery of Ryback, the failures of Jeff Hardy, the trappings of being a wrestling fan, the biggest of the big guys, and the danger of John Cena's penis. All that and more. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Mayhem Show 343, coming at you straight from the studios, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Sorgatron, ready to throw all the cat fancy mayhem awesomeness at you. With us in studio is Chachi, insert coin to begin.com, at Chachi says what? on Twitter. What's going what? on? What's going on, fancy pants? Hey, what's up? Hey. Sweater <laughs> vest. Mm-hmm. Senior sweater vest, classy. Also, I with, like to dress up for this show. Also with us, the classiest of the misters is Papa Lunchbox. So did you say cat fancy? I might have. In the intro, did you say the cat fancy mayhem show? Yes, yes. That's strangely appropriate. I am DJ Lunchbox, and oh boy, do I fancy cats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also with us from John. Oh no, wait, this is wrong. No, from Texas is the Wrestle Fan. From the great state of Texas, where cats are illegal, it Sorry, is Bobby. the Wrestling Mayhem Show, ladies and gentlemen. It is good to be back. And, uh, yeah, let's rock this thing. And also join us once again is the Riz. Fresh I'm on the show, meow. Yeah, I, was, I was up for 24 hours playing video games, meow. <laughs> and I gotta say... Meow is not the good time to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> raising, raising over three thousand dollars with his friends at InsertCoinBegin.com. What? 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 No. What? Raising are, are over you, one. Are you giving me two, two more thousand dollars? Wait, was so it over one thousand dollars? Yes. I tweeted something man, wrong so. earlier. Then that's what I'm talking about. Meow. I, I gave you guys a little bit of extra credit for your extra life. Uh, but no, doubling now, your okay. goal. Great stuff We're, for the kids. For the kids, meow. For the kids, meow. <laughs> uh, uh, this past weekend. Way to go, guys. Hey, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for the, all the information about the show, articles, etc. You can find us on iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, Stitcher as well uh, for easy access for all that yeah. stuff. You can drop us a line <laughs> at the email. Good times. Good times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Or Sorry, I got distracted because Sork said easy access. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> 412206 WMS0 is the hotline. We like when you leave your voice for us. What? Yeah, we're also access. on Facebook. We have a great Facebook open group where a lot of discussion occurs. Uh, we also are on Google Plus and at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. Also, please buy the app. You guys are still buying it. I'm getting the numbers every month. There's at least a few of you still still kicking in the dollar ninety nine for it. It's on your iPad. It's on your iPhone. Hey, it's going to be compatible with the new iPad Mini. It's got to be. It's Ooh. a universal app. Just announced today as of this recording. It's also on the Amazon App Store. Store for your uh, Kindle uh, Fire device or Android device, however you want to receive that. Easy access, again, to all the show stuff, uh, all the ways to contact us, and exclusive gold content, bloopers, other discussions, sometimes it's comic books, sometimes it's about WrestleFan's mother. Uh, all kinds of different <laughs> things. You never know what's going to come up there. So let's get right into it. The only way we know how, with the fan mail, who's up first? Are we starting with the uh, the the favorite? Sure, Papa Lunchbox, give it to us in those sweet sweet tones. Yes, sweet sweet Russian tones. Okay. Hey, 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 hey! What going on, Mayhem Crew? It me, it me. It's Big PPC. Great show per usual, by the way. See at George says, I told you to get at CM Punk DVD. And now you did. And you and Lunchbox even beat out the infamous wrestle fan by watching the Punk DVD first drops to all on the show. <laughs> Bobby, if J-Town, I wish... I agree I wish Orton would go make more movies I won't watch. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, Vicky Guerrero is managing supervisor and AJ was forced to resign as GM. The way I see it, this means AJ can wrestle again and the ball was dropped because Paul Heyman would have been the best choice for new Raw GM. But we all knew <laughs> that was not going to happen. Ugh. Get ready for a lot of excuse me's every week. Masked Marvels, Rey, Mysterio, and Sin Cara did exactly what I predicted at El Gland Azul. The Masked Marvelous win every time, but not for the title shot and Team Road Scholars wins. What a advantageous victory for the promising professors of pain and perfection. You're welcome. Wow. Nice to see Joe Hennig, a.k.a. Michael Gilcutty. I can't spell that shit. Yeah, he got <laughs> kicked in the head, but he got the offense in and lost on Raw this week, right? Kingston is doing great now. The team, Jimmy, team Boom Jimmy is done, thank goodness. Damn. Boom Jimmy in your pants. <laughs> yeah, doesn't sound what? good, does it? <laughs> yeah. Damien Sandow is fan-fucking-tastic. He is brilliant in the microphone and the ring. Cody and him complement each other well. Kane will, Kane and Debray will be great against Road Scholars for sure. Winner, winner. He is the tag champ team champion. <laughs> John Cena is going to, quote, take care of AJ Lee. End quote, that is not PG. Just saying, he had business dinner with AJ, you can call it whatever you want. Chandler and Monica from Friends used to call it doing the laundry. <laughs> 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 How can Porno be wearing John Cena plugging AJ Lee leaks? No one will care about Hogan old as old and shit. Yuck. I would watch that. I would watch it all day. Cena, my favorite saying ever. It is what it is. And there is some things that even Cena can't fix. Breaking news! Let's go, Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. Let's go, Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. Unfortunately, uh, no one is listening when people chant this. <laughs> Sad day, WWE Universe. The Rio hurt his arm. Nothing new. I enjoy it more when he does it to Earth. Yeah, the little snake. Paul Heyman is brilliant. Everything he does has purpose. It is best promo man, not a wrestler. Punk and Ryback at Hell in a Cell. Brock needs to interfere and help Punk retain title without either Punk or Ryback losing in some sort of no contest deal or something. I have a hard time believing Punk or Ryback will lose, so we will see. So, last week I asked about game. This week's filler questions. I am with Lunchbox, who said he would make a character of his own. Where I had made the three faces of Phil, with one being practical PC, another is damn Canadian a la evil Canadian persona of mine. <laughs> and Booster Man, when I had worked at the country club too long and had hot soup splashed in my face, making the Booster go to wearing a mask, and making the members lived hell. No, it's the Booser Man. Pick up your own what? fucking plates. Smash <laughs> plates breaking. Anyways. We're learning so much about Big PPC. <laughs> if Big PPC gets a shirt on the back, it has to say smash plates breaking. Excellent. Oh, man. What creations will you make? Mayhem crew... And what dream feud will you do? I will make Austin Aries and CM Punk and Samoa Joe versus John Cena. And I will make Owen Hart, Jim Neidhart, to finish making Hart Foundation. Till next time, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's Big BBC. Do you have an extra it's me in there? What's the did, that, <laughs> did I? I, I? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> That's uh, entirely possible. Wow. So, so I guess who would you make? But wasn't it the question um, last week? That was that was last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, well, I no, it myself. was who would you play as? 
Who would you play as, Chachi? I make myself, so... Okay, okay. LB? Uh, same. Like I said last week, I always make myself. Similar look, similar moveset. Yeah, yeah. Bo- yeah. Uh, 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 wrestle fan? Uh, I'd make myself, too, which is easier now. Since Primo's in the game, I don't have to like get a different Titantron or anything. So yeah, I kinda, that's yeah, kind of cool. That works, that works. <laughs> and, and, and But then you just drop the Epico one on there, so you have E for... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that kind of works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like I don't like cornrows. Oh yeah, Riz. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would make myself as well, but I also, if they work this time, I would go on and use a creation and, like download others. Yeah, other, yeah. That was like a big. That, that really is the biggest disappointment for me. Was that oh, I'm not going to get into my hate for WWE 12. Um, I, you know, I usually make myself a version of my ideal self that's all flippy and has like dreadlocks. Um, <laughs> when I have long hair. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't really do that this last time. I just kind of like picked somebody and played through, or, or you know, or something like that. Uh, see, so. I, my guy is a uh, usually submission. Yeah, submissions at, at expert. Mine is oddly six foot four, uh, yet a luchador. I I just like causing nice. pain. <laughs> mine, mine, oddly enough, has pretty much every move that you would normally see on the independents, which is very ironic. So you just, um, you just pick up Daniel Bryan and start from there. Just Daniel Bryan's moves, and then it's like a, a lot of like Yoshi tonics and shit, and like yeah, a lot of double stomps. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> all right, I got this one. I got this one. All right, one from Bobby F. J. Town. Oh, boy. Uh, he says, uh, Greetings, my people. Dear Wrestle Fan is the title, by the way. I hope you get trapped in a Lego Jumanji game. <laughs> also, good Raw this week, as there was a lot of wrestling. However, Vicky Guerrero needs to not be the GM type thingy anymore for one night. Also, Team Super Happy Action Neon Adventure go for the win! And I got a... It, well, just... I heard uh, echoes. Yeah, yeah. Justin Gabriel is going strong like Peter Gabriel. He's a sledgehammer. Go, Road Scholar. P.S. Aardvarks! Bobby F.J. Town. Okay, then. All right, I got I the next one. That. I appreciate that one. Wait, have to, okay. Oh, no, you, I am gonna... I'm gonna butcher... You, you're gonna do the Spanish this time? I am gonna butcher the shit out of this email. <laughs> Hit a white boy. Hola, amigos! Lu noche raw with no bueno. Last Boy. night's last night's raw was no good. Uh, I don't know. It actually says Monday night raw was no Shut good. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterio e Sin Cara, no number one contenders to uh, Campeón de Barajas. Baloney. They're better <laughs> off just putting. I think it's just, did you just shout baloney? It's in the email. <laughs> I swear it's in an email. I'm it's, reading it. It says baloney. Uh, halfway, awesome. me, I think you thought it was Spanish, though. Halfway through the email, he switches to English. It's not <laughs> Spanish because there's supposed to be two exclamation points. Oh, I'm sorry. They're better off just putting them in turkey suits if they want to. This is the careers. longest, shortest email, by the way. Yeah. Uh, they're better oh, off put it, just putting them in turkey suits if they want to bury their careers so badly. Forget this. I'm switching camps to TNA. At least they what? treat their luchadors with respect. What oh, luchadors? Oh, wait. Man. Oh, yay! By the way, hey. just a note. Luchadors don't technically mean Mexican. Like, just because Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez are there doesn't mean they're luchadors. Because <laughs> that's the only ones I can think of in TNA. He was joking. I know. Yeah, it's it's, it's funny. Uh, but also, let me just note real quick. If you love these emails from our fans uh, and you want to see them in its entirety and read them in its entirety, you can also go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com because we also have the Mayhem Mailbag. Uh, which is our new sort of post there we where we include all the emails, including some stuff that uh, we didn't read on the show. Uh, I believe Big PPC also mentioned some parts about TNA, so if you like that kind of stuff, I guess, um, <laughs> you can still go check that out on uh, RustyMayhemShow.com. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And now I think without, with you beyond that, we have a couple of voicemails. Before Wait. you... What? I have a question. Oh, okay. Is the Mayhem mailbag anything like a tea bag? Mm, depends on the week. I'll, it's, it's very I'll work on it. <laughs> mm, testicles. <Depends> on, whoa. <laughs> All right, we got one. I think we got a pre bra and a post raw bodiggity. Oh, shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wait, he, he sent an email. 
Oh. That sounded like a fire oh. truck. Fucking diggity. I'm here to bring you my reaction to what people learn in some fucking wrestling this week. Okay. Sorg is saying... Me. Uh, we're, we, we were talking about how, uh, you know, this, this whole Ryback thing is that, uh, uh, you know, a throwback and that we haven't had a big dude who's torn shit up. Okay. Need I remind you of the motherfucking Kool-Aid man, Mark Henry? <laughs> his whole thing was beating the shit out of dudes. Yeah. Henry that was his whole fucking thing during his championship. Yeah, hey, I was really happy then, pain. too. Dude. Come on. That was last fucking year. Okay. That was not even that long ago. That's right. Then you got Big Show on the other fucking show just claiming to punch big dudes in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you have Sheamus who just kicks the shit out of people. Yeah. He's a big dude. So... Before we go saying that Ryback is the return of big dudes beating the shit out of people, let's not forget the big dudes who beat the shit out of people. Secondly, this whole Ryback thing works because it really does feel like a one-off thing. I don't unless you're gonna unless Paul Heyman is gonna turn on Punk and switch over to Ryback and make Ryback into legitimately the next big thing. I can see that. I don't see Ryback being a, cha- a champion that doesn't have a mouthpiece of some kind. You're just going to have this dude just roll out, beat me more, and just start throwing couches and shit? <laughs> Come on. Let's be real honest here. Ryback is awesome simply because it's so fucking ridiculous that he has a chance, that he has a fucking main event pay-per-view shot. It's amazing. And I have a feeling that Cena is going to ruin some shit at Hell in a Cell. I fully believe that. <laughs> but then he'll still be a face. Just so Russell Fan could be mad about it. This has been both fucking diggity and just fucking welcome. Woo! Um, yeah, oh, hey, good, good pointing out the big guys there. I, I, I don't know. It, there's, there's definitely something about Ryback that kind of sticks him by himself. Yeah, Ryback. Aside from this, he, he's, he's the return of the big guy, but he's the return of the, I don't know, like the dumb. I don't know, it was a boring way to put it, but the dumb bad guy, or the dumb big guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all he does is come out and destroy people and walk away, versus you have guys like Sho and Henry that were came out, said they were going to whoop some ass, whoop some ass, and then left. You know, uh, yeah. it is definitely... <sighs> It's a different era kind of thing that I'm, I, I don't know if I can really kind of parse that anymore. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, I agree. I think uh, Ryback is a uh, very intriguing character. And I think unlike sort of all those big guys that uh, uh, AJ listed, it's it's different from the fact that, you know, Ryback, you know, the, the fact that he doesn't talk. Like mm-hmm. he's – and from the fact – the fact that he doesn't talk, and also the fact that, like, every, you know, Mark Henry is still technically beatable. Yeah. Sheamus is still beatable. And they've been beaten many of times, you mm-hmm. know. We and haven't they had... sort of get relegated down to, if, uh, at any point, they could be relegated down to sort of a lower level. See, the problem is, when you, when you bring up a guy like Big Show, when you bring up a guy like Mark Henry, they've been beatable. They've been beatable several times. It was just somebody like Henry and Show. They come around and say, "No, I'm going to just destroy people for a while," and, and I'm mad because, that I was a joke for so long. That's uh, the thing. They That's were the always... only way this Ryback thing will work. He needs to just never stop destroying people. Exactly. He, quite frankly, he does not need to have a competitive match with Punk. No. He needs to wipe the floor with Punk. Yeah, and then Punk pulls it out of nowhere. He does the heel thing. That 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 should be it. Um, now. Because because any time in the last like ten fifteen years, you needed somebody to over overcome the odds. You have them make a big show out of beating Big Show and 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 Mark Henry. They were kind of the they were kind of the large you know jobbers to make somebody like John Cena or Sheamus or Randy Orton look good. Say, like, oh, how's he going to be Big Show? Well, same way anybody else that needed a big push. Mm. Uh, and I think that's more guys. of a problem with um, I think guys like Big Show or Mark Henry sort of need to like slowly fade out, mm. and because Sheamus it's still believable. Yeah, you know when we've seen Big Show wrestle and the fact that uh, take take for example it's used with John Cena. Yeah, how the fact that John Cena has beaten him every single time, and they still try to note the fact that maybe he won't get him up for the attitude adjustment. But he's done it like five times before. Exactly. Like, and this, this it's, it's more this of a fact a that Big Show's been around. This that guy, long. this guy isn't four hundred pounds. This guy isn't 
you know, you know, been up and down like the, these guys. I mean, you know, so forget it. Skip Sheffield. Forget tough enough. I mean, really, yep. that's I mean, I think that's just this is not we just forget that ever happened. Remember, even Bill Gore, Bill, Bill Goldberg showed up as a jobber uh, during a they had like a three team match where Roddy Piper picked people off the street for his team <laughs> against uh, like team I, I, WCW and NWO one one pay-per-view. And Goldberg was one of those guys. And he was pretty much a faceless guy. I'm sure he got beat, whatever. Um, and then it, we just kind of forgot about that. And it was like, who's this guy beating everybody up? I mean, that's the same thing that happened with Skip Shellfield. Now he's right back. Right. It's a repackage. It's a different person. You forget about all that. Uh, as in the in the context of the professional wrestling world. So, I mean, that's kind of where I'm coming from with that. You're right about the other guys. But there's no history with this guy to kind of shake that idea that he's unbeatable so yeah i'll be i think a big i think a big part of the reason for all that is because well like i think in the case of goldberg the fans made goldberg um you know he he won a couple matches and the fans started really getting behind him they started chanting for him and wcw said we've got some good here let's um let's run with it in the very early stages, that was the decision they made. Where on the flip side, you take someone like Ryback. Ryback was going to be pushed down our throats no matter what. They were going to push him like crazy whether we liked it or not. The difference there is we like it. The crowd start chanting for Ryback. He's, he is kind of the second coming of Goldberg. The crowds are actually behind him. That's why we're getting him in the main event so quickly. Uh, yeah. Look at someone like um, – uh, what's that big fucker's name? We haven't mentioned <laughs> him yet. Great Kali. Great Kali. They pushed Great Kali down our throats for months, months and months and months, putting him in the main event, put the, the world championship on him, and uh, nobody gave a fuck. The crowd wasn't interested, and he just kind of faded away. You Greatest know what I mean? And then he became that big guy jobber <laughs> that you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's Do you think that'll difference. happen to Ryback, right back, though? Right Do you back. think that like, one day he'll get to that point where he is at that Great Kali level? I th- think so. I think, I mean, he's going to go for a while and the crowds are going to like him. I don't think he's going to get as big as Goldberg used to. And I also think it's only a matter of time before he get catches the, the injury book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially, I, think I think it's Ryback odd because, up, yes, like, a lot of the reason that – a lot of the hype behind Ryback is because he's a strong dude that, like, would kill jobbers. But it's – like, he became – like, I think the biggest part of his popularity is because he became basically a meme. Like, honestly, people were, while it was cool that he was crushing people, people were making fun of the fact that he had pink eye. And that's Mm -hmm. what they were talking about. And the fact that he says dolphins eating sharks. And, you know, that was the thing that people talked about. Sharks swimming with dolphins. Sharks swimming with dolphins. That's it. I I like like the visual of dolphins eating sharks, though. (laughs) Dolphins just kind of picking up sharks. (laughs) It's like like piranhas. Uh, Texas Anarchy throws out their Pujambi prison match. Ryback versus Kali. In. Oh, my God. Kali, game changer. Game changer. (laughs) What do you think about the situation, Riz? Um, I think when they first brought in Ryback, and they just started throwing him jobber after jobber after jobber. I think WWE wanted to make him a joke. Okay. I think they they wanted him more of a, hey, look at this guy. He's coming in here and he's undefeated. Look at him. He's beating up this guy you don't know. But after a while, you're starting to get, oh, maybe oh, he should do something. Oh, wait a And he's, he started climbing and they started taking him seriously. Remember? And then. Oh, good. I was gonna say, remember what they did at the beginning, where it was always like somebody in the back is watching him, like yeah, like, like Tony started, Atlas like, was watching and him, and or like the Usos, like the Usos and JTG, or... and, and Tony Atlas. Tony, <laughs> Tony Atlas. I go back. I go back to Tony Atlas. <laughs> Tony Atlas is important. Tony Atlas. <laughs> Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas makes me happy. There you go. We got one more oh. voicemail, guys. Um, I'm sorry, Riz. Did you have more to your point? I just said fuck sleeves. Oh, okay. Go. That fits. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Let's turn that on. And here you go. <laughs> sorry. It is your one time co-host of the year. Greatest voicemailer of all time. And man holding the title of Bo fucking Diddy. 
that's not a title you can win. It is given, and it is given only to the great me. <laughs> now, normally I hang out in the Google Hangout, watch Monday Night Raw with my friends. Okay. It's been a while. And me. Haven't seen a fam in a little bit, so I had to do that last night. So I figured I'd take some time and bring you my jokes that I thought up <laughs> while watching Raw later. <laughs> Joke number one. Sin Cara's on Twitter. All the text is in blue to hide the spelling errors, but he has one every four words. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Seamus' sunburn joke with the brawling buddy was funny, and I don't care who you are. That shit was hilarious. I laughed, and I laughed hard. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it is having to have his face busted open with, with the kick in the face. It's kind of amazing. Uh, also, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else caught this. JR said that uh, uh, Justin Gabriel is a South American. Hmm. Close enough. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb so the JR hasn't seen a map in a while because <laughs> South Africa is in Africa, the continent, not the country. Africa is not a country, children. It is a continent, and I want everybody to get that shit straight. Africa, not a country. South America, also not a country. So you can't really be South American. Uh, also, uh, they said that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Antonio Cesaro has not been beaten, or cannot, or be, cannot beaten be beaten by an American. American. And I'm thinking, and I'm to, thinking to myself, I should probably I should check, probably check NASA's, NASA's website. website. And I did, and I did. And I noted a notice on myself. So it's coming in a, uh, there's a ship coming in from Mars. Just keep an eye on that. Mars. That's all I'm saying. Mars. <laughs> Mars. This has been both fucking diggity, Marf? and you're fucking Marf? welcome. Marf. It's Mars with a lisp. Oh. Hey. No spoilers. Mars. <laughs> All right, there you go. Thank you, Bo Diggity. Uh, any commentary Bo on that, guys? Diggity. I think it all speaks for itself. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, don't, Di- we don't need to commentate on Bo Diggity's voicemail. He asks no questions and expects none Nothing. in return. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's move on to the. Uh, he also sent in an email. He did yeah, also he did. send oh, an email. Jeez, man. Yes, he did. Uh, where is it? <laughs> it's in the it's dock. In the, it's in the dock. It's in, the, it's dock. in the dock. I'll do it. How about me? Okay. I'll do this shit. It's only you better fitting. do it right. Okay. It's Bo fucking right diggity. Now. Here's a fun thought. Who are the veterans in WWE right now? We used to complain about Triple H and Undertaker holding top spots back. Now who are the old guys at the top? I can really only think of four, and one is putting out comedy gold. Kane? Big Show, Orton, Cena? Everyone else is an internet smarts dream. The WWE is in a really good place and to me is actually taking advantage of the extra time on Raw. See, Sheamus Barrett, Cesaro in the tag team division. The Sheamus matches would have been relegated to SmackDown but get premier TV time. Cesaro is making magic in his matches. The tag division would get nothing. Hell, Heath Slater has a faction with the time they have now. TNA is now in the spot WWE was in not long ago. They had a young guy as champ, but just like WWE, focused their promos being stupid angles not involving the champion. Instead, pushing angles with Hogan and Sting and fake biker gangs. Not good business. Why do we get excited for Destination X? Because they let the athletes shine. It's not about bullshit promos and pretending Bound for Glory is tiny WrestleMania. It's about amazing matches that I could watch over and over. Ditch the old assholes costing you a ton of money and get back to your roots. The roots that made me wonder why the hell the WWE didn't have these kind of matches. And it's moving. Uh, I went back and watched Punk's sit-down promo again. The talking points there then are the same talking points he uses now. He talked a lot. Oh, this shit's moving. Let's see. Hold on. A lot about respect then. That one promo set up the Vince contract angle, the John Laurinaitis angle, the Triple H angle, the Cena angle, and possibly the Rock angle. You back? Uh, yes. One promo, a year and a half of storylines. That's incredible. It would be kind of fun for Punk to beat Ryback but lose the belt to Ziggler after he cashes in. That match would be fantastic. Maybe even save it for Armageddon slash TLC. Also, hey Samoa Joe, leave TNA and go to WWE so you can work with Punk again. TNA is dropping the ball extra hard with you. Recreate the magic of your ROH matches. This TV belt bullshit you're working with is insulting. 
Woo! Bo F, Bo F Diggity, the F is for fucking. <laughs> he's right. He's right, though. Yeah, because I well, that's been the con- the conversation I think we've been having between uh, here and on Hangout is the old fogies are gone. Your old mm-hmm. fogies are John Cena, okay, Orton, Mysterio. Remember when they were the new guys? Not mm-hmm. too well. It was a while ago, I guess, in, in the long run. But still, look at who they're working with. They're not working with the same guys every month. You know, there is a look. Look at the diversity in matches we've had in the world title. Okay, we did have a pretty good longer than it should have been run with Sheamus and Del Rio. But still, we had like Del Rio. You know, that's like somebody different. Sheamus. Sheamus, Sheamus is a young guy. Um, it's like we woke up and all this happened that we wanted to. And shouldn't you be more appreciative? We're looking yeah. at you. <laughs> and and wrestle fan, little side note here. That was a horrible Bo Diggity impression. It, it really was. I can't, I can't. No one can do it justice. Good reading I'm, otherwise. Oh, oh, just, well, maybe Chachi. Good reading otherwise. All right. Let, with that, let's get to the uh, most amateur of minutes, the indie minute <laughs> with the wrestle fan. The indie. By minute, the way, and by the way, I got it. I got time gotta, for this. I got. I, I'm sorry. I, I got to say, there's somebody. Uh, somebody is it somebody. I told him what I do with with the indie wrestling, you know, DVD stuff, and they keep calling it amateur uh, amateur pro wrestling. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I we partly, wrestle on circular mats. And I partly like... don't have the heart to explain it. Uh, yet it really pisses me off every time. So, <laughs> I, uh, so. So I need to I need to correct it when other people aren't around. Uh, but really other than true, that, yeah. they're just one of those things. Uh, like I mean, people think of it that way, you know. And, and I just think, um, I mean, there's a difference. Unfortunately, it's not the same line, lineage thing of going amateur football to pro football. I guess. Right, and I think it's all if you consider it a sport or an art. Yeah. Pro wrestling, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just true. It's true. It's all different things. But talking about DVDs and talking about Sorgatron Media DVDs, hey! there was a big event. Uh, upcoming this uh, this past weekend for IWC, International Wrestling Cartel, no excuses. And I know that Sorgatron Media was in attendance. Uh, Sorg and Chachi were there uh, at Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, Sorry. at the Court Times Sports Center. Uh, so I, I want to know, guys, uh, what big is going on uh, down there in the IWC? Well, first of all, I got to say, big surprise of the night, of course, Shima Zion, Zima Ion was there. I haven't just lost his X Division title. Was not announced for a match, but ended up uh, finding himself in a match with one Andrew Palace, who, uh, if you watch any video or see any pictures, he's the one that pretty much looks like Carly Dove. <laughs> like, right down to the purple tights and the, and the hair. I, pretty much. Um, no Apple, though. Uh, I was really surprised about that. I think this is the guy's third match in IWC. He's a trainee of the uh, uh, IWC wrestling school. I was pretty happy. I, you know, I don't you know how much of it was like Zima making him look like a million bucks out there. But this guy has, I think he's gotten a lot of his persona down. Chachi, you were up and close with that one. Do you have any thoughts on that match? Oh, that guy is entertaining as hell. Yeah, I mean, kind of um, classic heel deal. Yeah, he is. He's good already. Mm-hmm. And he's just getting started. So I can't wait to see what what comes of it mm-hmm. uh also interesting uh, of course more with jimmy nuts uh against aiden vale uh the former pocket rockets you know i was excited about them before uh but but he is slimy in his persona over in <laughs> iwc he's literally slimy because he's part of the good guy let's go nuts you know uh, with, with with uh rwa and it's kind of it's kind of nice to see that other line you know the other side of the equation for him like he's one of those guys remember like a, like he's one of those guys i'm always like chachi get in his face and, yeah. and chachi knows it uh and, and we get a lot of good reactions out of him on camera um also uh really happy to see uh michael tarver uh teaming up with another new guy hd cannon against john mcchesney and bobby fish well, I had no, I knew nothing about this guy going into it. They're talking him up on the IWC boards. Didn't really know much. I didn't know he wrestles with uh, uh, what uh, Noah in Japan, and yes. he actually does MMA on the side. 
He does. He's also big uh, in the U.S. He's very big in uh, Evolve Wrestling and uh, Dragon. I believe also Dragon Gate USA. He's done some stuff. Um, so yeah, he's definitely been growing as a really uh, popular name, putting on phenomenal matches. So I'm glad that uh, IWC got to uh, showcase him. Yeah, it was really cool, and especially you know pair him up with somebody like uh, Tarver. Of course, you know we we last known as one of the original uh, Nexus. Uh, you know, back around where uh, the big thing where they came out and, you know, uh, Daniel Bryan got suspended and not that whole ordeal. Um, I didn't know he had been let go officially. And I wasn't wasn't sure why or anything like that. But, you know, seemed like a super nice guy. Uh, really entertaining match uh, w- with all that. Uh, seeing him in there with uh, Bobby Fish and McChesney. Um, so and uh, a great match between friends of the show, uh, uh, Logan Shulo Drink. and Dalton Castle. <laughs> Drink again. Double drink. D- double drink. Double drink. There's been a drinking game on the uh, Facebook page uh, every time we say friend of the show. So hey, friend, friend of the show about. was a title drink. that was given or created by us before the Mayhem show well, cre- was created big, okay. by Papa Lunchbox, to be fair. To, to be fair, to be Thank you, for, uh, but to be completely fair, I stole it from Stephen Colbert. Well, of so. course, of course, there's <laughs> that. There's that as well. There's that as well. Uh, Chachi, what are, what are your highlights of the night? Uh, my favorite match and by far the best match of the night, hands down, was the uh, Super ND title match between uh, Facade, uh, friend of the show, friend of the show, uh, Drink. Rich Swan, Drink. and uh, Sammy Callahan. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's to the point where even over the headset. Um, it, let me just start off by saying that the match started with a dance off. What? Um, <laughs> And if you know, granted, there's Sammy Callahan yeah, in this match. I was gonna say, <laughs> if you know Sammy, then you know that why this is surprising that there was a dance off. Um, but uh, Facade and Rich Swan had a dance off, and out of nowhere, uh, Sammy decided he wanted to get in on night, get in on the action, and he said, "Wait, let me show you my dance moves," and proceeded to kick uh, Rich Swan in the face. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it was at that point that I decided, um, because I had been watching uh, Avengers, uh, I've watched it like three times since I bought it, mm-hmm. um, and I text the org and I've told him multiple times that every time Hulk punches Thor, I giggle. <laughs> like flat out little kid giggle. Uh, see me uh, kicking someone in the face or in any manner has the same effect on me. Uh, anytime he boots someone, I, I giggle because, uh, I for one would never want to be kicked by that man ever. Not in the um, balls. Not right? in a knish. No, never. Um, not even in, in a wrestling, uh, ring type format. Cause I imagine that that shit hurts still. Um, he just he destroys you, mm-hmm. um, and it's hilarious. And uh, to see him uh, tell Rich Swan that he wanted to show him his dance moves, and then proceed to kick him in the face was amazing. It was hilarious. Um, but yeah, that by far was the best match match of the night, hands yeah. down. I mean, it's definitely it was definitely one of those kind of tweener shows uh, uh, for IWC, even at core time. Uh, winner takes all is going to be the next big one. Uh, uh, next up is going to be uh, we'll be out there for Combat and Clearfield. Uh, of course, that's why we're missing the RWA show next week, which I'm sad because there's going to be female wrestlers at the RWA show next month. What next month? Next month, yeah. What I, I said say? next week. Next month. Yes. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be up in Clearfield, PA for Combat and Clearfield 4. Uh, they're going to have a big battle royal. Um, and they're going to have uh, Gregory Irons going to be there. Uh, Cherry Bomb, Pepper Parks, uh, amongst the rest of the uh, crazy cast. There is most of it right there. Uh, oh, oh, also, I don't want to mention, friend of the show, David DeMira, was in a Drink. freeboard roles. Uh, they'll probably double drink since he was also a former co host. Um, <laughs> Uh, hey, hey. He was in a free bird style match, uh, joining the rest of the blue ha- blue collar slaughterhouse against uh, the founding fathers, who came out <laughs> as the founding fathers. Yes, uh, no way. yes, yes. Hentai wore a white wig. Yeah, over uh, the mask. They all wore powdered <laughs> wigs. Uh, they came out in uh, colonial style suits. And... Did their best Hunter Hearst Helmsley commercial? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, impressions. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, <laughs> quite good. 
<laughs> Tremendous. And all this is leading up. They already called title versus title. She, I'm sorry, facade super indie champion against Logan Shulo, IWC heavyweight champion, uh, title versus title, Iron Man match at winner takes all in December. Uh, it's going to be an awesome match. Yeah. And That's if Shulo gets by the winner of the battle royal for Kaladic, uh, Kaladic which Kaladic, judging by the for, picture here for, i'm calling Fairfield judging by the battle picture Kaladic. here i'm calling seraphini to win the battle royal <laughs> <laughs> throwing that out there do it all right what else is going on in indie world that's not just in our neck of the woods over up here in pittsburgh Mr. well Texan not in fan. the pittsburgh neck of the world woods in a very different neck of the woods this past weekend why can't i say the word woods holy woods. shit because um, you're from the south woods. and legally retarded <laughs> It goes together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lunchbox. I'm sorry, um, no, I'm sorry. but in the Texas area this past weekend was Anarchy Championship Wrestling's big Halloween event, uh, Beyond Good and Evil, uh, down at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas. I gotta say, it was a phenomenal event. It was such a fun event to be li- uh, to be live. The Did costumes we, 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 were in full effect by no, everyone in that she show. screamed. Uh, let's see, we had she didn't just tap. Ray, she screamed. She just Lady like, Poison showed emotion. No, no. Uh, she just tapped out Jessica J. Rose and Rachel Summerlin, nice longtime friends. He's here yes, at both at the same time. Including, including painting himself blue, which I got to get Which the founding that, members of AC. I, I don't think, think she knows where she is or what happened, uh, but yeah. she's crying. Yeah. Um, we had uh, Brian Danielson in Samoa Joe outfits. Uh, we had uh, Gangnam Style references galore. Like, it was it was a phenomenal event. Uh, it shows how, you know, fun ACW can truly be and how creative they can be. Um, so I definitely encourage uh, anyone to check it out on DVD when it comes out and to also follow Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Their next event is November 11th uh, for their big uh, Lone Star Classic, their annual tournament that they hold every year. Uh, it should be a very fun event. Uh, 12 men compete. The winner uh, of the tournament, one night tournament, will be Lone Star Classic champion and also will be ACW heavyweight champion. Uh, so go check them out. Tickets are available. Hi, Riz. Um, Hi. Tickets are available. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Tickets are available at uh, anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. So go check them out and um, go have some fun. Also, I will note, since he is in the chat room, uh, go also to texasanarchy.com to see the photos from uh, this uh, past weekend show posted and uh, took in by Texas Anarchy in the chat room, the lead Tookin. photographer for ACW. Tookin? 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 I thought you were in college. What? Well, Lunchbox really? didn't bring up Tooken. Lunchbox, it's taken. Did, Lunchbox As didn't bring taken up the fact too. that he is from the South and therefore legally retarded. Oh. We don't so, speak the so language. So college down there is like yeah. a GED here, right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Tooken <laughs> too with that Liam Neeson's... I, hopefully, hopefully I can be educated uh, as further goes on. So yeah, should go check them out and go support them down in Texas. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, another big event coming up this weekend uh, is for Shimmer Wrestling, the uh, big female wrestling company. They have their weekend of tapings October 27th and October 28th in Irwin, Illinois. Uh, a lot of big names uh, in the female wrestling world for that event. I'm, uh, a lot of names that you can do, I'm very excited about because a lot of names that you really good to really see anywhere else in the U.S. Uh, so I would definitely encourage people who are in the uh, Chicago area to check that out. Uh, uh, talents such as the Shimmer uh, Champion, Sue Soraya Knight, uh, Tag Team Champions, the Canadian Ninjas, Portia Rose and Nicole Matthews. Uh, a lot of big female names um, all over the world. So if you want your tickets for that event and to uh, go to both of those nights, uh, I go check out uh, Shimmer uh, tickets are available. I believe it's shimmerwrestling.blogspot.com uh, where you can go get your tickets. Um, so definitely check them out for a great weekend of female uh, pro wrestling. Um, and the next cr- thing I want to talk about... A little bit of criticism, about, Shimmer. Go get yourself a .com. It's cheap. And come on, you're better I was going to say, I, I knew, Seriously, I knew you're better than that blogspot.com. So blog do something about that, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. You never know. Um, but so yeah, definitely go check them out and uh, go see some great uh, women's wrestling. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, something I actually found out today that I'm really excited about. Uh, Smart Mark Video. Uh, one of the things they announced was that they are looking to do uh, live eye pay per views um, for their uh, on demand service, which um, is really interesting because uh, you know eye pay per views have sort of been a new venture that a lot of people are doing. Uh, but they're gonna they, they want to make sure that everything goes smoothly for their first iPay-Per-View. So for that reason, they are having a free 
uh, iPay-Per-View, a free preview um, on October 27th, uh, which is a Saturday, for the Wrestling is Fun promotion, which is the, sis- uh, the sister promotion for Chikara. Um, so if you are interested in checking that out, go to smvod.com, smartrunvideo.ondemand.com, and on October 27th, they will have a free iPay-Per-View, live iPay-Per-View from Allentown, Pennsylvania for Wrestling is Fun, with the main event being uh, Mike Quackenbush taking on Mr. Touchdown, Mark Angelo Setti, uh, as well as uh, various other Chikara talents. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be checking that out. It'll be a good, because uh, I, I haven't followed a lot of Wrestling is Fun, uh, but I hear it is very fun. Um, so I encourage speaking, you... Speaking of iPay-Per-Views... Yes. I just want to throw this in there. Um, I, I read this today. The iPay-Per-Views will now be available to watch uh, via your Xbox 360. Thanks to the new Dash update, you can go through the uh, the um, packaged Internet Explorer and you can watch the iPay-Per-Views uh, through your Xbox 360. Nice. Nice. That's very nice. cool. It's, 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 it's going to be really cool to see how this advances. And uh, like I mentioned, a lot of people are going into the iPay-Per-View route. So with Smartmark Video doing it, who is doing amazing jobs with dvds um it's, it's gonna be interesting to see and i definitely think they can pull off something really great so like i said that's october 27th uh smart mark video on demand.com go check them out uh it's it's gonna be a fun time uh so and if you want to see some fun wrestling i would definitely encourage you to check that out um and the very last thing i want to mention on the indie minute is uh some very sad news uh to report uh from this past week uh CZW star and also former IWA Mid-South star, uh, brain damage, uh, known by many people as Marvin Lambert, uh, sadly passed away this past weekend. Um, it was a, a very tragic incident. Uh, didn't, uh, uh, it was very surprising to a lot of people. Um, so I definitely, uh, uh, send my well wishes out to the Lambert family, uh, as well as everyone I'm assuming here from the wrestling mayhem show wants to send out their, uh, well wishes. Um, bra- uh, brain damage was a big star in the CZW area, as I mentioned, as well as Ida Green mid South and various other, uh, uh, various other promotions as a death match wrestler. Um, so I definitely, uh, send out my best wishes to him and his family. Uh, so definitely, uh, sending out good thoughts, uh, over to them. And that is the, uh, end of the Indie Minute for this week. There you go. Thanks a lot there, Wrestle fan. We're going to head over and see what's going on at Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold and be right back with Remember When? Hmm? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Cat Mayhem Show. Ow. Shut up, Wrestle fan, meow. Right meow. Shut up, meow. Hey, I won. I messed up a made-up name. It's not a made-up name. He wasn't even it's Japanese. A real name. He was Samoan. It's what not a real name. Time it's out. a title. What? I don't want to play with you. Women will have sex with you. <laughs> Why not fuck this tube with a rubber <laughs> vagina in it? Flesh <laughs> lights. So let's do this. I'm in the club bouncing. Trying to politic with this bitch, but I'm shouting. So I just let my gold do the talking for me. Diamond shining yellow and white, two tone jewelry. Who is he? Fresh to death. Oh, yes. I'm what's happening now. Don't care what's next. Don't flex. Still, this girl wanna walk up to me. Try and get. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and that's that time for the part of the show we all enjoy. Remember when? That's right. This week, of course, we've been talking about Ryback a good bit lately. And, uh, you know, his rise, which kind of like kind of came out of nowhere. OK, uh, but didn't, you know, and, and, you know, we've been a lot of discussion about, you know, is is the you know, the big guy thing back? Is this the rise of the big guys? Is this or have they really kind of been here all along? So I thought uh, remember one, let's do uh, uh, kind of go around the horn with uh, which. So what's your favorite memory of uh, the big guys in wrestling here? How about you, Mr. Lunchbox? WrestleMania. Six or seven. I can't remember which one. The, the one where they were uh, all kind of Roman themed. Mm, nine. Togas and nine. shit. Nine. That sounds right. Why not? 
The Undertaker, who's a big guy in his own right, wrestles Giant Gonzalez. Not just a big guy, a big guy in a muscle bodysuit <laughs> with fucking hair glued to it. Who managed and I him? loved it because I was a little kid and that's who that shit is for. <laughs> who managed red, fucking red stitches on Kane's stupid outfit. That's fucking <laughs> retarded, but it doesn't matter because if you're nine, that shit's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and my awesome. other... My other big guy favorite memory is uh, the fact that they pushed Diesel so hard, not because of wrestling ability. They never let him on the mic just because he was over seven foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, How about you there, Riz? Going the same way as Lunchbox with the uh, Diesel reference. The great Cully. I've mentioned him before. I'm going to mention him again, probably. (laughs) But it's because he was so big and so stiff like his legs weren't moving <laughs> but they still pushed him to main events to the moon. they still pushed him to the world heavyweight championship and just because he was 7 foot 12 8 foot with 355 maybe 80 pounds I don't know um, but still, it, just because he was there and he actually did good things with The Undertaker, even though The Undertaker did kind of kick his ass a little bit, uh, as well as everybody else. But other than that, the other big guy I want to mention is, uh, I don't know, that's about it. Excellent. Great Cully. Wrestle fan. Game changer. Every level. <laughs> Russell fan. Uh, yeah, I have one. Uh, first, let me note that uh, obviously people were going to say this wasn't in my era, but I'm going to preface this with a story because when I first got into wrestling, uh, I wanted to follow it as much as I could. Uh, so there was a Hollywood video that was uh, located by my house, and it pretty much got like, you know how they used to sell VHS tapes, you know those things, um, and they would have VHS tapes of, of like old WWF and WCW stuff like from 99, uh, and I got the Royal Rumble 99 once, and I remember watching it, and we got to the part, where's the Royal Rumble? And I remember, because that was the big Steve Austin, Vince McMahon stuff, and, you know, um, you, you know that stuff was the big stuff. So they were the first two entrants in, and they were fighting it out. And then the third entrant comes, and it's Golga of the Oddities, who I had never seen before, but was wearing, like, some weird, like, leatherish mask and came out with a uh, Cartman doll. And I thought, well, what the fuck is this? And me being young, thinking this was amazing... Um, and then getting eliminated. Uh, so I'm also going to preface this with, I think, the better big man of the Oggities, Kurgan. That man was a fucking boss. Side he, note on that, uh, on that, uh, Vol- what was his name again? Golga? Golga? Golga reference. He didn't just come out with the Eric Cartman doll. He came out with the Eric Cartman doll in a box of cheesy poofs. <laughs> He's all with it. Yeah. It, he, he was amazing. I need to more. I, I apparently need to watch more like Raw from like 98 or 99 because oh. I want to see how, like how big the oddities actually were. Well. Like I knew they did the whole shit with ICP and that, but like. Yeah. But that's the thing. And then I, but that's the thing. I look back at them and I saw Kurgan. I thought Kurgan was the fucking greatest thing ever because he was a big guy, but like there was, there was just like something about him. He was, he, he was much different than I think like a great Kali because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, he was, he was actually probably sort of the same build as him. Um, but uh, I'm probably Kali was a bit taller, but I, I just was really mesmerized by Kurgan. And that's yeah. one of my like big memories of like old wrestling, like watching it from the chat room real quick. Uh, uh, uh Bobby says that Golga was the OG man child. Uh, <laughs> Cars says freight train, um, freight train Texas Anarchy says belly. roadblock and Loch Ness. Um, yeah. <laughs> And there's your weekly five dollar wrestling mention. Um, speaking speaking of Kurgan, Kurgan would go on to uh, have a role in uh, the the 
Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movie. Yep. Uh, yep. Where in an accident, he would uh, knock Robert Downey Jr. unconscious by punching him in the fucking head. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Aside from that, he was great. Russell fan. Or, I'm sorry, Chachi. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go with Crush. Crush? Yes. Oh, crush? Crush. Now, Demolition Shit. Crush or the Kona Crush? Demolition. Demolition Crush? Yeah. We're like, cool, a new Demolition guy. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. It's all the time when they had to let their masks and everything too, right? Yeah. And they did the kind of a free bird rolls thing. And Fun. Yeah. Fun. That was a good time. That's one of my favorite times too. Good time. But Big PPC it, brings up a good one. Uh, Vladimir Kozlov. I miss Vladimir Kozlov so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I'm going to go classic now. I, you know, not in a classic sense for this guy, but I always had this tape uh, that I rented and later purchased for as a previously viewed copy. Uh, the big event that was at the CN Center in Toronto was basically like the, where the Blue Jays field there right beside the tower, right? Uh, one of the big kind of ball field shows they had up there, I think they had it at a small arena and they sold so many tickets, they moved it to the outdoor ballpark. Uh, main event by Hulk Hogan versus Paul Orndorff, you know, kind of, kind of thing. But halfway through the card, there's this interesting match. I think they're wrestling the Heenan family uh, in some capacity. Uh, but it was, uh, there was used to be this tag team called the Machines. And, uh, and, uh, and they all wore masks and everything. I don't know who they really were. I'm sure you can find on Wikipedia or something like One that. One of them was Andre the Giant. One of them was it Andre the Giant? Yeah. yeah one, of one of them looked an awfully lot like Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> They were just the uh, one machine, uh, like machine number one, mean sh- machine number two, and then giant machine. They actually giant called machine. Him, they actually called him giant machine uh so that was i and i i'm sure this was like kind of a longer angle going into this i think i read later that this was like the last kind of face angle they had with andre the giant before he kind of faded out and then they talked him into going heel and doing the whole wrestlemania 3 passing the shorts thing because he was basically done at that point like physically and mentally uh from doing this so many years and of course you know the problems with his health because of his size and everything um so i I, and and i think this is something that like whatever was going on with this angle just kind of stopped short uh from what i recall reading i think uh so so yeah there you go giant machine that's my answer (laughs) (laughs) or is it all right, guys, let's toss it. Oh, from the chat room, was there any we missed here? Uh, Wait, I, I have to go back to Alex's one. Okay. Uh, he brought up Freight Train. And me owning the the uh, the copy of uh, $5 Wrestling Trainwreck, mm-hmm. I can tell you that there's one wrestler he didn't mention. Mm. And that was Big Donnie. Was Big Donnie the was Big Donnie the one in the red singlet that like is way yes. too fat to be wrestling? Yes. Who like who like Cliff Compton kicked and like it like bounced off like pretty much. This is wow. this it, it, he's Big Donnie. He's Big Donnie. He's Big Donnie. I'm sorry to interrupt, but he's Big Donnie. Also from the chat room. Um Excuse me, uh, uh, Godfather, Papa Shango. I don't know if they're that big. Uh, well, I think I but, think that says a lot because I mean, in that era, they were bigger. They are big. They are technically still imposing. bigger than the they're guys imposing. today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tugboat execution number one, execution number two. <laughs> uh, one man gang him style. Yeah, one man gang slash Akeem. It was it was a pretty big one. Remember the That's Twin pretty. Towers with uh, uh, Akeem and Bossman, uh, King Kong Bundy, Abdullah the Butcher as well. And uh, they once say the natural disasters. I, I think it goes without saying. Yeah, we did mention earthquake. I mean, he's the yeah. one that broke Hogan's ribs. Uh, mm-hmm. My wife actually sent a goodwill get well card to Hulk Hogan during that. Remember that whole thing? Uh, yeah, viscera. There you go. In any of his. This one scared the shit out of me. Oh, yeah? Well, wow, there's Midian. three different posts. Big PPC said Big Daddy V. Wrestling Revolution said Viscera. And Big PPC <laughs> went back with Mabel. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's like, it's like how, can we, how can we make a scary wrestler? We're going to take a large dude who's African-American, give him a blonde mohawk, and then put like weird like uh, contacts in his eyes. And a leather bodysuit. 
And a leather bodysuit with that was like stunning. Oh, that alone. All right, on that note, let's uh, see what's going on in Mad Mike's world. It's the minute of mayhem. Hello, and fans and friends across the land, it's Mad Mike once again with your minute of mayhem. As you can tell, I'm at work again. Woke up a little late, watched some of Raw, some of the parts on Fast Forward. Seem fine, still don't know what they're gonna do this weekend with Punk, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone takes a ride back. Especially with how concerned Paul Heyman look. And shock of all shocks, John Cena's cleared to wrestle, so who knows? I think one thing I wouldn't mind them doing is maybe making it a triple threat and then having Ryback locked outside the cell somehow. That way he gets to brutalize Heyman, people cheer, and Punk goes on to beat Cena. Anyway. That'd be an easy way to do it. Ryback wouldn't lose. He'd still be undefeated. But, you know, that's that's one way they can get out of it. As far as TNA goes, I didn't really watch it this week. I, I mean, I breezed through some of it. It's odd that um, gut check is supposed to be the way for TNA people to get contracts. Yet, all of Aces and Eights, all of them, they don't even know how many people there are. Now they all have contracts. If everyone's really so angry at Aces and Eights, why don't they just attack them in the parking lot? Get the entire roster. Go out there and attack them. You know where they're sitting. There's a fucking camera crew there. I don't get it. But um, they need to do another reveal on this, because otherwise people are going to drop interest real quick. Because I don't... No offense. No one gives a fuck about Devon. No one does. Unless he's a reverend and he has... Deacon Bautista holding a collection box. That's the only way I'm probably going to care about Deacon again. But, um, yeah, so that's that's it for the minute this week. So, um, I will do the TNA article this week since I'm a little less busy. And, um, then I don't know what I'm going to review. I listened to the guy's suggestions last week. Um, I might do a porn. I don't know. I don't think so. It's, it's just be really hard to get a hold of one of those. Um, maybe some wrestling movies. I have a whole shit ton of DVDs that I can review. I have the, um, the WWE 24-7 I might go back to, because they have classic pay-per-views on there all the time, so I may do some of those. But, uh, yeah. So, give me other suggestions. Send them into goodtimes at wrestlingmanager.com if you have anything that you want me to review specifically. And also, guess what, bitches? That Mike's going to Chikara. Yeah. Cybernetico Rises is going to be in Manhattan on November 18th. And Mad Mike's going to be there front row. It's going to be awesome. Peace, bitches. Thanks, Mike, for that wonderful minute of mayhem. Mm. Oh, All right, guys. We've already talked a good bit about Ryback and Raw and everything like that. So how about some TNA? No. No. I don't want to. No? Oh, no. no. Hey, I watched TNA. Oh, yeah? A whole five minutes while I was waiting for repo games to come on. Okay. <laughs> and it was just uh, a whole bunch of people rushing into the ring and beating up a whole bunch of other people. They like doing that. They yeah. really do like doing that. Like the one group was all wearing bandanas. I yep. don't know who that That'd is. That'd be aces and eights oh, that we okay. talk about every week. Oh. Ah. And then someone showed up with a baseball bat. I think it was, uh, uh, I don't know. I it was gave- Heath Ledger, right? Yeah, yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, <laughs> too soon. Jack, well, Jack Nicholson. Want to talk about Jack Nicholson came down from the rafters with a sure. pair of hedge trimmers, and it was it was crazy. Like, that sounds fuck? like an awesome show. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> can we talk? If we want to talk about TNA, can we talk about sort of the stuff that maybe we you know be able to like at least be angry about? Oh, oh uh, sure. The right. fact that uh, Jeff Hardy brought back a new title belt. No, he didn't bring back the new title belt. He brought uh-huh. back his old, stupid, face title belt. Except it's not purple now. Except TNA, where we allow you to do whatever the fuck you want. Also, I don't know if you told this to me, because we were doing the hangout during Impact. Uh. Jeff Hardy's just a fucking asshole. A little bit. Like, Austin yep. Aries comes out with balloons and cookies, and, like, he offers, like, Hardy a cookie, and he just, he just swats the whole tray out. And just stares at him. The like, man made you cookies. He made you fucking cookies. 
You don't know what's in those cookies, though. You don't know if they were store bought or not. You can't. You can't say that he made them cookies. But you can't. But you can't say you don't know where those cookies though, have been and that they may have drugs in it. Because Jeff Hardy would like that. That's true. Yum 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 yum. Hey, side note from drugs. from Wrestling Revolution: Sammy Callahan wrestled a dark match for t- WWE tonight. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Well, he was. He had to miss uh, the show before because he was off in. Yeah, he was doing he was doing something for FCW or something. Yeah, yeah. so that's cool. Mm-hmm. So good for Sammy Callahan. Yeah, like thanks for getting us off TNA. Hopefully, that, hopefully, probably... <laughs> hopefully, he doesn't get Dean a- Dean Ambrose and never shows up. Oh, oh, but if they form a tag team, ooh, like they, ooh, maybe I got I got an indie there. boner. I think I think this time going uh, going back to WWE since we're, we all are in agreement that TNA sucks. Okay. Um, that this whole thing with AJ is going to wind up with Dean Ambrose. I'm go- I'm gonna is, is he's gonna find his way somewhere in here? Like he was the one. Or he, he was one of the guys who conspired with AJ, or something like that. I don't think AJ's all serious. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I think AJ might have done it herself. I like new wrestle fan better than old wrestle fan. Apparently, old wrestle no, fan. No, no one likes old wrestle fan. Wait, I li- everybody I like likes wrestle new fan. wrestle fan though. Maybe we should get New Wrestle Fan on the man show, and he can do the indie minute segment. Yeah. Well, New Wrestle Fan will. New Wrestle any. Fan, if you want to take a shot at the indie minute, get, please drop us a line at goodtimeswrestlingmayhemshow dot com. We'll give you a shot. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my watch. Um, but going back to the uh, going back to the AJ thing, I because I thought I really liked Raw last night. Like I thought in general Raw was actually really good, and like it, it for the for one of the three hour Raws, I think it was probably one of their best. Uh, except for any of the AJ segments or the AJ related segments. Okay, like, it, I'm gonna let you finish, mm-hmm. but you better have a very good point. Mm. Okay, I feel I I feel to me it's very much like the uh, TNA uh, cl- uh, what Claire Lynch sort of angle. I'm over this like. You know, AJ is having sex with someone, which means that she's doing her job improperly, and it's a it's a who done it angle, like sort of. I'm kind of over the whole who done it angle, mm. like it's sort of annoying, and I I feel like it's a the whole storyline started off rough, and it's a very lost cause now, like especially. The fact that Vicky's the general manager now, or the not the general manager, the managing supervisor. Um, but AJ can beat her up now. Just like when AJ was the general manager, Vicky could beat her up and have mad? no repercussions. Why are you mad? Because, I mean, there's no double standard there. Yeah, they're, they're consistent. Yep. Yeah, but it's it's consistently bad. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> see, here's where I disagree with you, though. I, I think this is going to be an interesting angle because it gets John Cena, at, or potentially will get John Cena out of the title angle because they'll be doing something with him and AJ. So you think it's just like sort of a way? I, I it's something new for John Cena. True, but I think in turn, it's the same thing. Like when, because I obviously they're going to. I think they're going to build to something with possibly Cena and Punk at Survivor Series, and eventually to the Rock when he comes in, because the Rock's going to come in for a thing at the Royal Rumble. Um. I think they're going to be building to that. So it's kind of like when WrestleMania rolled around. And so like, okay, let's put John Cena in this angle with Kane and Zack Ryder and Eve to like, so he has something to do before this rock thing. And I wasn't a big fan of that either because it was just ridiculous. And like, you know, just, it it wasn't a a filler angle, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. I, I, I think this is kind of the same thing. I'm going to disagree with you. Uh, okay. I, I'm excited to see where this goes. I, I think this is something new for John Cena, and I think it'll it'll work out well. If, if nothing else, let's see where Ryback goes. Let's see if Ryback steps no. up to the plate on this. No. No? No. Well, give him a chance. <laughs> listen. Listen. <laughs> Just no. Ryback may be over with the crowd, and I'll get to them in a moment. The crowd? Yes. Okay. I will Why are you pointing to, to me? I will get to them in a moment. <laughs> um Ryback is just a, a a space filler. Okay. He doesn't deserve to be where he is. Okay. 
because he is useless. He is another Brodus Clay, another guy we don't need, only the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Brodus Clay comes out, he'll lose a match, but that's not the point of why Brodus Clay is there. Brodus Clay is to dance around and have fun with the kids. Yeah, and that's fine. There's a place with that. It's the Saturday Saturday slam position like Santino. They'll always have a job because the kids love them. But But they've never given Brodus Clay a high-profile feud or a high-profile match to this level. The only reason they're doing it for uh, a Ryback is because he's so over with the crowd. Right. And they're listening. And so, John Cena was hurt. Well, yeah, and John Cena was hurt. <laughs> uh, but uh, he doesn't deserve to be there. I, I don't like him. I, I think this whole thing is a bunch of crap. <laughs> I don't okay? like him. No. I, 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 no, no, I get it. It's just the way you said it. I, I don't like him. He oh, should I, not be in the spotlight. I'm not sure about that fellow. He No, he should not be in the spotlight. He doesn't deserve to be in the spotlight. What has he done so far? He comes out, he crushes jobbers. Right. Guys who are getting paid a, a 150 bucks to come out for five minutes slowly, and get destroyed. Slowly, but he slowly started progressing, you know, beating up other people. Yeah, like he yeah. had matches with, like, Jack Swagger and Drew Yeah, they started mixing and up. And Miz, yeah, but and, still, he, he is not... It. All I have to say How is, is that uh, Ryback better not make it into Hell in a Cell. Ooh. Okay. Wait, I'm with you? I'm actually with Chachi on this. Yeah. He does not deserve to be where he is. There's other guys on the roster that would much rather be fit better fit in that match than uh, this jackass. Oh, completely. Completely. Yeah, I, I I do actually agree with Chachi. Like I said, he's getting he would be getting this monster push anyway because Vince McMahon loves big guys, but his push is even harder because the crowd just said, okay, we're just going to start chanting stuff. Right. That's what happened. And that's why he's where he's at today. It's not because of talent. It's because he's a fucking monster. Yeah. And, and I, I, go I, ahead, did, go ahead, Riz. I don't think punk and I think punk and Ryback will probably happen, but it won't be main event. I think, the World Heavyweight Championship will be the main event. Well, I think it is main for the event, simple, isn't it? Because wait. it's it's Hell in a Cell. It's the only Hell in a Cell match. No, I think I'm pretty sure Sheamus and Big Show's Hell in a Cell too. Yeah, it so, is. So I think they're trying to push <coughs> Sheamus Big Show in the main event spot because of that wild card, Dolph Ziggler. By the uh, well, by the way, because Dolph Ziggler would be an awesome close close the show guy. I think so, and I think him cash. I think there's a high chance that he will cash in. The only problem with that is one, we've had um, problems, or we've had it so long where the world heavyweight title is usually the opener to pay per views. So randomly, they're just going to act like this belt means more. Well, that we're going to put it on the main event. That's I I think that's going to be kind of odd. And two. Uh, so I, I don't think it will happen, but I wouldn't put it past them not putting a Hell in the Cell match as the main event because look at what they did with Elimination Chamber. Refresh my memory. Elimination Chamber. The main event was an ambulance match. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it's okay. like the Royal Rumble not being the Royal Rumble's main event that one year. That was weird. <laughs> um, I'm kind of sad when that becomes the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I wouldn't put him past them. I don't think there's a match that isn't Hell in the Cell that could be the main event. Mm-hmm. But don't put him past them doing that, you know. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah everybody's agreeing. Basically, you know, Wrestling Revolution, uh, Ryback won't make it to the main event now that scene is cleared. Uh, I call Lesnar to take him out before the match or something like that. People, A lot of people are calling Lesnar return on this one. By the way, side mm-hmm. note, uh, everybody knows, anybody knows Brock Lesnar's all over the poster for WrestleMania? Yep. For having walked away from wrestling? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like before in um, uh, SummerSlam, before... Before he actually said in storyline that he would be there, they released the poster and it was just his face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being a shark. I remember your video on that. Yeah, that's Swimming true. with dolphins. Swimming with dolphins. It's just, it's just dolphins eating sharks. <laughs> 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 Excellent. There's some other news here that I was talking about. Um, 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 
there's a TV reality star that may be showing up for WrestleMania 29. Oh, Lord. Now, it's I am not boo-boo. into... Honey Boo Boo style. I am not... Like, this video, I was watching a little bit of it the other night. This is the first I've seen of Honey Boo Boo. And I, I love I that that's the first you've seen of her. I, I've heard on it on Twitter so much... I have yet to see a single video. What the hell is up with Honey Boo Boo? What's happening? Okay, first off, let me just say that if this happens, I'm done. You're done. <laughs> I'll walk away. No, no, Chachi, hold on, because I got it. I would, I would love to see Honey Boo Boo in WWE. Only, only if Damian Sandow comes out and shits on her whole family. Nice. <laughs> that would make it. Okay, that would be amazing. Honey Boo Boo versus Ryback. <laughs> <laughs> that that's well, the you, only way you can have her in. There was uh, speaking. Of, there was calling in, in, in the chat room earlier. Honey Boo Boo's mom in an eating contest. In the chat room earlier, they were calling for uh, uh, Taker versus Ryback, Streak versus Streak. Um, mm-hmm. Nope. Gross. No. Nope. No. I wouldn't even steal that pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Wrestlemania uh, it's real Wrestlemania not tiny Wrestlemania yeah no I wouldn't steal it I wouldn't watch Wrestlemania if that match was on the card wow 100% I would I, no <laughs> no um, to get Snooki back, was a lot okay uh, <laughs> no I, broke Chachi. I didn't even watch that no uh, well. I, I, there's something I want to discuss rather quickly um I don't know about you guys but I'm about ready to stop listening to wrestling and just put on the closed captioning. <laughs> really? Yes. Wrestling with subtitles. Even with like like JR and, and JBL. I right? like the commentary last night. No, Why? it has nothing to do with the commentary. Okay. I'm sick of the fucking crowd chants. You know what? I'll go with, yeah, I'll get I'll get behind you on that one. Alright, well, what were you mad about? Everything. Jersey. Okay. Between the uh Goldberg chant every time that fuckhead comes out. Right back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to the uh, this is boring <laughs> during amazing technical matches. What match was that? Cesaro and Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. So fuck that. That, that match was boring. fuck those guys. That, that was like one guy, guy though. It was audible, but it was like one dude. No, it yeah, was. It had to have guy. been fuck one him. whole section, and it's not just last night. They do that shit every week. During one of the best matches on the night. And especially lately, when we have several really good matches on Raw. Right. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but I'm sick of all the other dumbass chants. Okay. And I don't, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head right now. Sure. And I don't really this need awesome. to, because you all know what I'm talking about. I don't know, if, awesome. I don't know if this would probably you, Chachi, because I know you're not you know, a fan of theirs. Uh, I think last week it was even Layla. I thought even Layla was like actually a really good match. It, like, was. it was! like Yeah, it wasn't bad. It, for a Divas match, it was really good. And they started a This Is Boring chant. You know, like, what do they, to a degree, like, what do they want? Listen, like, they're, 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 I gotta understand, there's gonna be a mix of people, like, like, uh, uh, who's saying they're half smart, somebody in the chat room, it, it went by and says, like, they're half smarts and half, half the other people don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, I don't, that, that's true, there's different types of people. There are people out there that would be entertained all night if John Cena came, went on the mic and bullshitted all night. There's other people that are, that, are, that actually want to see wrestling. Um, I don't, but I think there's that mix of people, there's, then there's drunk dumbasses that are just in, just there. Um, I think I think so, drunk plays a bit into it, but I also bit. don't think it's. This, I mean, the, yes, there are people that are smart fans that can act like that. Hey, but yeah, you know what? I, the, a lot the, the of wrestling was, fans I, use, are kind of assholes. Yeah, I'll use. Have you been to an indie show? Uh, <laughs> the Cesaro Gabriel match is an example. The only reason they were chanting this is boring because like they were in like a submission hold or something, or, or Cesaro had him in like a headlock. Like, people out there, it can't be all, like, flashy shit. Yeah. There's a reason people do things, okay? There's a there's a build to things. Mm-hmm. Just because they aren't going balls to the wall, like, for, and, you know. And, you know, and these are the guys that are like, man, I miss the days when uh, New Jack bled over, all over everybody. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Or I miss the yeah. days when there was more flippy, flippy stuff like the luchadors and all that kind of stuff. I used to be into the, the when I was very young in wrestling. I was 
full, fully on the flippy stuff. You I'm know? still into the flippy stuff. I'm still <laughs> impressed by the flippy stuff. It has its place, you know. But it's, um, there's I mean, a I, reason I, that, for everything. That uh, the the super indie match was kind of a flippy match, and there's a lot of other fun stuff with that too. Um, yes. But there but was still, pro- also, I, I bet there were still probably match or parts of the match where they were doing like transitions and like you know, exactly. like you know, say it's like seven of- had him. Go ahead. Or that's like there was like a headlock or some sort of like cool off period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a part of the story. Yeah. If you're gonna chant and ruin the story, don't fucking watch it. And and, and there's people and I, I- I'm gonna use him as an example, and he's gonna yell at me, and it's gonna end badly. But uh, people like Mad Mike mm-hmm. that Uh-oh. go... You called out what? I did. I did. You just called Mad Mike out. I did. And I'm, <laughs> I, I deserve everything he's going to say to me. And that's fine. And uh, I, I love the guy. But there are some things that he goes to shows to try to get started as a chant that are just yeah. stupid. It, I, that, that is true. I mean, it's that type of shit that when I sit down to watch wrestling, I don't want to listen to. Right. I mean, he can, can I, but, I, 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 but it's a preference, though. I mean, we were the ones that always went to the old IWC shows and ch- started bum chants for Denny, Dennis Gregory. I mean, there, there's there's no, a mix I between didn't. that. You guys did. Well, okay, us guys, whatever. There's, there's a part of that everything. that it's fun, and I yeah, like, yeah. I chant crazy shit too. I I don't do it to a point where it's interfering. Mm-hmm. You know, there, at that point, a, it's sort of drawing the line, and I get. Like, people have their own lines as fans as to what they think they can say and what they can't, and that's mm-hmm. fine. Um, but I just try, I try to, just, I encourage people to just, just think about it more. Are you having fun? That's a basic thing. Are you having fun and not being a dick to the There's wrestlers video, or anything like that? I think we've played it before. The Super Dragon guy is a great example of how bad a chant can go. I, right. Explain explain Super Dragon Guy for those who haven't the seen it. Super Dragon Guy, if you haven't seen the video, and I don't know why you haven't, um, they, the whole crowd started chanting Super Dragon in a, in the middle of the match. So the chant keeps on going, and it starts to die down, except for one guy. And he just keeps on chanting, and everybody <laughs> starts booing him and Make the tell him to shut the fuck up, and then he then then the best part is in the middle of the match, Super Dragon goes out of the ring, over the t- over the barricade, and starts yelling at the fan for chanting. <laughs> it, it's probably one of the best Smackdowns <laughs> to a fan I've seen. All right, hey, WrestleVan, you're calling out the guys. Uh, um, there was a there uh, last night's Anarchy show. There was a good example. Uh, two guys, ACH and Matthew Palmer. They put on a phenomenal match, mm-hmm. but during like an early part of the match, uh, Palmer sets up this like the only thing I can describe it as it's a chair pyramid. Like they put like a six like six chairs in like a row like next to each other. Top it with chairs. Top it with more chairs. Like it, a layered thing, um, and it was actually cool to see. The problem was. As soon as he did that, they had like a 30 minute match and it was phenomenal stuff. Um, but everyone kept chanting. There was a, a section of people that kept chanting, use the chairs. And uh, they did a thing where uh, both people got uh, pinned to the mat at the same time and the match had to end, but they restarted it. The fa- but the thing was, the fans were more. The fans were. Those fans were pissed that the match ended because it was a phenomenal match. They were pissed because they hadn't used the chairs yet. Like that's the pro. That's I think is the prop. Like fans need to just. Un- that's and that's like coming back to the chill Cesaro out, Gabriel thing. Chill out. Fa- step back. Are you having fun? Don't show. be a dick. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Yeah. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Dude, in, in, in the end, just don't be a dick, guys. Don't, don't be. A dick. Be, have fun. It's wrestling. Don't be. Your a dick. message is here at the Wrestling Man Show. If you go to the show, don't be a dick. Yeah, don't ruin for anybody else. You know, know the line. Like guy flip, guy flipping off both fingers. Uh, all the wrestlers uh, in the front row all weekend for no reason. Oh, so we, that guy! Absolutely no reason. No, no. And actually, one of the one of the trainee guys went over and like said, "Hey, can you like stop doing that? This, we're trying to do a family show here." Yeah, I know we slip every <laughs> once in a while, but we're trying to do a family show here. So. Is that the guy with the belt? 
Uh, no. I don't, he didn't have a belt, but I'm pretty sure he was drunk or something. So. No. Yeah, no, no. Um, Thinking of a different guy, then. It, well, maybe he just didn't this time. I, I mean, you'll see You'll see on the DVD. Um, anyways, on that note, let's go in and around. Let's get out of here. Tell us, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Mr. Chachi says. You had a lot of wrestling. What? You had a lot of wrestling this I weekend. Did. Yeah, what'd you learn? I had a lot of wrestling. I think you learned a couple of things from Saturday, right? Saturday? Chachi sounds so tired. Uh, a Tarver? Yeah. Is hilarious when he's just <laughs> standing in the corner waiting for a tag. Now he's like shit talking the whole time. He, he said, is, I didn't get to hear any a, of it. He is a trash talking expert. Oh, he oh. has a PhD in trash talk. I think he's uh, from Cleveland, so I think that kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, it, amazing. Yeah, yeah, so excellent. Wrestle fan? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week. I actually learned it from the uh, the game show. What was it? Uh, the um, the uh, newly team game. Uh, I learned that me and Kane are compatible because he's a Scorpio. <laughs> and you like long walks on the beach also? Mm. I do. I do. I also uh, like fire, so maybe that'll work Kane out. Kane never ceases to amaze me in, mm. in any fashion. Riz! Yes? What'd you learn? Oh, sorry. I'm, like, still out of it from Saturday. But <laughs> what I learned from wrestling... Uh, let me see if I can... Jeff Hardy needs to go away. Take his belt and just go away. <laughs> Take your belt and go in your hole. Yeah, just go in your little crack <laughs> hole. Right around there. Carolina. Sniff, s- sniff all the crack off that cookie sheet that you threw to the ground. Mmm, <laughs> crack cookies. <laughs> you jerk. Oh, wow. Man, I'll be... I learned that John Cena's penis ruins everything. <laughs> Eve, Eve gets a little bit of the penis. And suddenly, Zack Ryder's back gets broken. HJ comes after the penis, and uh, suddenly that bitch is getting fired all over the place. And I want to, I do want to give major props to Wrestle Fan uh, because Eve heard a rumor that AJ was fucking Wrestle Fan. Uh, she mentioned it on the phone there, so. Wrestle and big up. High five. High five. High five. No, I think that's apparently because no one wants NXT. What's NXT? Oh. Yes, sir, in the corner. I also uh, learned that, uh, and not learned, I'm just sharing this fact with you. Um, if a belt changes hands at a house show, it doesn't count. <laughs> I'm talking to you, main event. Main but event main is not a house show. House show. It's on Ion. You can it's pick it up TV. on your Exactly. Antenna. Exactly. <laughs> it's on a channel that no one fucking watches. I got it. Oh, okay, nobody watches it. It's all just reruns of like stuff. Does it matter? USA, it but... might as well be an hour long house show on Wednesday night. <sighs> I'm saying I, Miz I, is I, still I see champ. I That's all that think matters. Main event is like awesome they spend 15 minutes building to the match they have their main event which feels like it goes on for about the middle half an hour on it and then they have some bullshit match after that which uh seems like it's more often not leads to another 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 match next another one yes i also learned that we spent the whole remember when on big guys and not mention vader oh wow Mm. All right, from the chat room real quick. Uh, learned that Antonio Cesaro is amazing regardless of the dumbasses think at a live show. Um, screw you, Chachi. Oh, what? Wait, what? That, that's Alexander Cars. I learned that Russell Fan is the young boy on uh, the Wrestling you know, Mayhem show and get gets shot. constantly beat. Texas Anarchy, uh, you have not been here long, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Wheels learned that I, I get to work VOW with Gold Dust in December, and I think Bam Magera, Magera, Margera? Margera. Margera, Margera. Margera from, from Jackass is going to be there as well. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Um, I'm hold, back on, on. Hold, on, hold on. Hold on. I'm still on this. I learned that Chachi deeply, deeply hates Rybok. Ry, Ryback. Ryback. Russell Ryback. Fan loves burn victim murderers. Uh, <laughs> uh, Russell Fan <laughs> learned that AJ gets around with Primo. Uh, Bobby learned that the WWE should not put Rosa Mendez on their trucks. The truck swerves all over the road. Also, that Daniel Bryan is basically Sonic the Hedgehog. John Fun learned <laughs> that the new Wrestle Fan is is in, and the Wrestle Fan is out. 
Hold on, hold on. There's just so many. Wrestle Holy Phantom shit. was never in to begin with. Um, Saturday Morning Slam. Or the WWE should not put... Okay, yeah, okay. I think I got them all. I think I got them all. Sorry, Chachi? Uh, why am I being told fuck you? I don't know. Uh, was, you uh, know right. Something something you, you talked about. Uh, so there you go, guys. Thanks a lot. Again, go ahead and check us out. We're at... We're at... Well, I, I, I just right. told yeah, them... I'm used to being told to fuck off and stuff like that. I was just looking for a particular yeah, reason go. this time. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Blip TV, Roku, Stitcher. Uh, go check us out. Uh, drop us a line at Good Times yeah. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Uh, also, please buy the app uh, WMS Gold, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold in your iOS store. And clean we are also on Spreaker. On Spreaker? And Freaker. we're on Spreaker, thanks to John Fun. People, a lot of people have been listening to us there. Uh, and also the Amazon App Store for the app. Uh, so again, Chachi is at insertcointobegin.com. At Chachi says, I'm sure you, if you disagree, you can get at him there. <laughs> uh, also at the rest Come at me, bros. Come on Twitter, at, me. at Riz IUP, also a member Insert of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Get some Thanks sleep. Thoughtful, oh, ThoughtfulRiot.com is Papa Lunchbox, also oh, at DJ Lunchbox on Twitter. I'm at Sorgatron. I'm across all across the Sorgatron medias and the internets. Please go check out all of our fun stuff. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Come at me, bro. Episode. Coming at Chachi. Coming at him. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the